Uh, hi, my name is Orion Bradshaw. I am a Post 5 Theater Company member. I am co-directing Romeo and Juliet as well as portraying Mercutio in the play. Speak but one rhyme and I am satisfied. Cry but I mean. Pronounce but <laughs> love and dove. Hi, I'm Jeff Gorham and uh, I am uh, co-director of Romeo and Juliet with Orion Bradshaw and I'm also having the fine pleasure of playing Friar Lawrence. What is your very great? That is a rule. But not so bad that only earth shall live, but to the earth some good shall give. Hi, uh, my name is Ty Boyce and I am a Post 5 Theatre Company member and I'm also playing the role of Romeo. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. Uh, the process for this play has been, uh, wow, a Goliath one. I don't think I've ever invested in something more in my life as far as theater is concerned. And three weeks into the rehearsal process, ignited, on fire, passionate, um, full of, full of joy, <laughs> terrified, horrifying, I'm completely terrified. A run through, stumble through, uh, of our Act One, uh, which is Shakespeare's Act One, Scene One, through Shakespeare's uh, Act Three, scene, a couple of days ago. And you know what? Let's just put it out there. It was a a surprisingly beautiful thing. Not because I don't have, not because I don't believe in everyone involved, but because the cast came together, the cast and crew came together to really to make something that was that was keeping me up the night before. Uh, make it run as smoothly as it possibly could. There was some just gorgeous acting moments. Talking with the directors and stuff like that. It was what we wanted to be. Like it was. Um, it was, it was informative and like there were some discoveries made. It's like, oh God, we really we really need to spend time working on uh, this. A first stumble through of act one the other night and uh, I felt like a, uh, a proud father uh, releasing his children and uh, saying, you, you can go on your own now. And uh, I know that sounds sort of uh, corny, but it was unbelievable. Uh, and I had a blast. Like, and how do you feel about playing Romeo, who's such kind of an iconic character, there's been so many takes on him. Are you doing anything differently? Are there kind of traditional aspects to the character that you're trying to adhere to? Uh, how do you feel about that? It is the East, <gasps> and Juliet is the Sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon. I haven't seen a lot of Romeos because I'm still pretty new to acting, but like I, the Romeos that I'd seen were awfully precious. Everything was the poetry had a heaviness to it. And I think Young People in Love is, is just the opposite of that. It's, it's light and it's fun and, it's, and it fumbles and bumbles and it's imperfect and it's messy and like a lot of comedy ensues. And that, that story is, is really kind of innately, naturally taking place. And that's really fun, that's really cool. So, my, my Romeo, I think, I mean, I don't know, because you're asking me, and I probably have a pretty different perspective than people watching it, but I think that my Romeo's, he's kind of, he's kind of an idiot, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Oh, the challenge of of playing Mercutio as well as uh, co-directing this play. Oh, we loved him. We loved him. We loved him. We loved him. <laughs> what? Is this not better now than groaning for love? Mm. Mm. Uh, even though he's only in the first act of the play, he is first half of the play. He is uh, such an elusive person. Um, he has one of the most difficult speeches in all of Shakespeare, for one thing. That and also, it's so easy to make him just this fun, ruckus, like wild, kind of crazy guy. But my, where I go as an actor is why? Where is that based in? Where is that grounded in? Is it, is it simply his love for Romeo? 
Is it his love for the Montagues? Is it his love for life itself? I don't know, and, I, and I'm figuring that out. Oh. Shot through the heart with a love song. <laughs> the very pin of his heart cleft by the blind oh boy's butt shaft. And he is a man to encounter Tibble? I said I'm really just trying to approach the role with patience and an open mind and love. Uh, both my love for the character, Mercutio's love for himself, and Mercutio's love for his life and the people he chooses to keep in his life. I think. Oh, that's a good question about directing and acting. I've never done that before. I feel like a basketball. Uh, in basketball, they had player coaches, right? Um, so I'm a player coach, I guess. But uh, I'm having the time of my life playing Friar Lawrence with Ty Boyce as Romeo because uh, I already have a kindred spirit with Ty and we tease on, on the stage a lot about Ty's the younger version of me. I am co-directing this play with, with the lovely, talented, and wily Jeff Gorong. <laughs> and it, it, it has been a pleasure. It really has been a pleasure and an honor. And, and I couldn't be happier with our choice uh, for a co-director. Uh, the co-directorship, um, Orion's a saint. Um, we balance each other quite nicely. Ryan, you know, he has a, a minor in Shakespeare, and he's, you know, he, he's very, he's very rooted in the text, and so we're making sure to to continue and serve that text well, and and make that the, you know, what's what's paramount, what's the most important. And Jeff is so good about moment. You know, Jeff is is like, a, um, he's like a play, he's like a. A football or basketball coach that's a player's coach like he knows you know he knows the game uh, from from the other side of the fence from an actor's point of view because he is first and foremost a wonderful actor and um, so he's really great at finding moments and helping us clean stuff up I cannot express how refreshing it is to see these young actors and uh, some of us middle-aged actors taking direction and then you see it manifested and you look over at Orion, the other director, and I said, I just gave that direction and they did it exactly how I envisioned it. So I'm very pleased with that. We are staging this play contemporarily. Verona is, uh, in our play, reflecting the lovely city of Portland and all of its different eccentricities. Um, and so with that, we know that we're gonna run into some maybe run into some Shakespeare purists who don't, uh, don't quite appreciate or don't see eye to eye with us on our choice to do that. But, and that's fine, and that's fine. That's a lovely thing about Shakespeare is that there's always gonna be a um, kind of a, a cacophony of opinions about did that show work? And uh, don't wanna offend anybody with that. Still pure, man, we, do, we did not change the language, folks. It is the language, so I, my feeling is we're still pure then, right? If I may say so myself, I think we're doing a, a pretty great job of honoring Shakespeare's words, but putting it into a vessel that is very much understandable to a 21st century theater-going audience or not theater-going audience. We want everyone to feel welcome. And his words are to be cherished and respected. And I think we're doing that, but I think we're finding a way to make them fresh without making that the, the, the point of emphasis. We want to do it different. No, I think we're succeeding at, at finding our own way to tell the story. I am so excited to welcome them into a free Shakespeare performance and have this lovely, timeless text, this poetry, come alive for them in the context of now, the here and now is a magical space. The acoustics in here are just uh, fantastic. So um, you will, it, it, it already has sort of an Elizabethan feel to it even though we're doing it in Portland. And so we hope that you will join us during the run of Romeo and Juliet. Join us in this um, just effervescent theater experience that we are trying to create. So I think you'll be surprised um, you'll be surprised with our rendition of Romeo and Juliet.